This is a 120 millimeter Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4 fan. This is a 120 millimeter Corsair ML120 Pro LED fan. And this is a 140 millimeter NCXT F140 RGB fan. They all have one thing in common. They're all fans. But there are many small differences between fan models. And in this short video, we're gonna try to summarize as many of them as we can. I, I might forget a few, but we're gonna call it comprehensive anyway. Here we go, stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Let's kick things off with what I believe to be the most important difference between PC fans their sizes. I have a 140 millimeter fan here and 120 millimeter here, and these are the two most common sizes you'll see even when shopping for AIOs or just generic CPU air tower coolers. They'll likely be paired with either a 120 or a 140. And this is an important distinction because some cases only support 120s and some support up to 140s, and there are advantages of going with larger fans. The two most prominent are airflow and noise, and these are actually trade-offs of each other. So if your fan is spitting at a higher RPM, obviously it's gonna make more noise, but it's gonna displace more air. If you lower the RPM, it's not gonna be as effective as a fan, but it'll be a lot quieter. A 140 millimeter fan can theoretically displace more air at the same RPM as its 120 mil counterpart here. And this means that it technically should have quieter operation while being just as efficient from an airflow perspective. The only issue with these again is that not all cases and not all radiators support 140 millimeter fans. Take for instance this Fantex P300 case. You can see we can clearly fit a 120 mil fan here, but we don't have any room for 140 mil fans. And that's just a consequence of a more compact mid tower like this. We can however fit 140s up front and that's where I want to run a few tests. So we've got two Be Quiet Lightwings fans here. The only difference between them is that one is a 140 and one is a 120. We're gonna place both of these in that same Fantex P300 case, and we're going to run both at the exact same 1000 RPM mark. This here is the 120 millimeter fan, and this here is the 140 millimeter fan. So yeah, a very clear difference, I would say. Another thing we can talk about while we're here, RGB. It's a love it or hate it thing. This trait blew up over the last decade or so, and that's why so many manufacturers have included RGB options. One of the good thing about these though, is that if you don't want to run any RGB at all, you can just turn it off. Something else to look out for, the type of RGB supported in each fan. This Lightwings fan from Be Quiet supports ARGB or addressable RGBs, meaning each individual LED can act independent of all of the others, making for some pretty cool effects. The problem is a lot of older boards don't support this feature here, meaning you might need to rely on a hub. These are their own can of worms. I tend to stay away from these wherever possible and just wire my fans directly into the motherboard on the RGB side. Uh, this hub is not the worst I've seen. They do add clutter though, and often rely on their own RGB softwares to function properly. That's another can of worms. Now some fans don't rely on any RGB at all. And these are super simple to not only cable manage, but maintain, they don't rely on any software. And it's just one cable to deal with, so nice. But a nice middle ground for someone wanting very simple lighting inside their build. These ML120 Pro LEDs come in various colors. This one has uh, white LEDs baked in, but that's the catch. You can't change the color of these LEDs and they only have one cable stemming from each fan. So they're easy to cable manage. They don't require crazy RGB software or anything like that. It's one color, a static color. You might run into a case where you have just like a rainbow fan or something like that, but it can't really do much because again, you don't have an independent cable with an independent controller, but I like these. These are, yeah, a nice common middle ground. Here's a good one. Three pin fans versus four pin fans. You might hear it's referred to as voltage fans versus PWM fans. We have a dedicated video, by the way, on PWM and how it works. If you wanna check that out, it's in the video description. The gist of this argument is that four pin fans, while they do often cost a bit more, allow for more flexibility in terms of RPM tuning. You might find three pin fans a bit annoying and stubborn, especially when tuning with your fancy fan tuning software. These things usually have a voltage bottom and you can't really dip below that without the fan completely 
shutting off. PWM fans, by nature of how they work, can pulse power over and over, resulting in lower RPMs and much quieter operation, especially at idle. And if you're shopping for fans wondering how you can tell the difference, just look for something along the lines of fan connector. You can see this one from NCXT clearly says four pin PWM. If it doesn't specify this, it likely is just a three pin fan and is probably a bit cheaper. And again, will be a bit more annoying to tune. Now, maybe you're shopping and wondering why are some fans seemingly more expensive than others, even when all the other traits we just discussed are the same. Say they all have built-in RGB, say they're all PWM. Why are some fans 30 or $40 and some are like 15, 20 bucks? Well, my friend, there are some interesting characteristics of premium fans you might not be aware of. These Silent Wings Pro 4 fans are perfect examples of value adds, characteristics and qualities that you might overlook while shopping online. Take, for instance, this sweet little toggle here. It allows you to choose between various RPM presets or profiles without the need to download any third-party software. These are also six pole motor fans, which means six magnets are involved in the operation of this motor instead of your traditional four. It means it can run quieter in theory, but it also means the price is uh, gonna be a bit higher. Some fans come in packs of three or six, and this might actually save you a bit of money per unit. And some fans just look plain weird or awesome, just different overall, and you'd expect that extra tooling to add to the cost a bit. But be diligent. When it comes to packs of fans, some include hubs to support things like RGB connectivity and maybe just straight up power to each fan. It's nice to have all that kind of centered again around one hub, but it does add a bit of clutter and might require the use of third party software. Some packs of fans don't come with any hub at all, and it's kind of just a you're on your own scenario, but those packs might also be cheaper as a result. And if you're foregoing a hub altogether, make sure that your motherboard has the included RGB connector on board. This is a standard RGB header, and this is an addressable RGB header. And you can confirm which, if either, your board has on your vendor's page. Another distinction you might come across while shopping for fans is static pressure versus airflow. Airflow fans just try to move as much air as they can from point A to point B, and they're not worried about what necessarily is behind them. You'll find airflow fans in a lot of cases, for example, where there's a large open space right behind each frame. A static pressure fan is usually associated with either a CPU cooler or a radiator, where again, you've got a lot of hindrance there right behind the fan frame, and so it's more important to get that air forced through those small little crevices and channels as effectively and quickly as possible. Silent Wings Pro 4 fans have a very high CFM. You can see many different fan blades, they're curved very sharply. These would make for great case fans. That's not to say they wouldn't be effective, atop radiators or next to CPU tower coolers, but they do the best job at just getting as much air as possible from point A to point B. Now compare this to a Noctua NF-F12. This is a fan that ships in the Ryogen 2 360 and AIO from ASUS that I showed you a few clips ago. This fan has far fewer fan blades, and the blades themselves are shaped and just angled much differently than they are in the Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4 fan. And that's because this has a much lower CFM and is just targeted toward a different use case. CFM, by the way, is a measurement of how much air a fan can displace over a unit time. And to be more exact, CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. There are also measurements of cubic meters per hour that you'll find in a lot of European countries. And sure enough, check this out. Airflow on the back of the Silent Wings Pro 4 box, 142.5 cubic meters per hour. And as for the Noctua, 93 3.4 cubic meters per hour. That is a vast, vast difference. But again, not really a reflection of how effective the fan is in general. They're both very good and actually very expensive, but the Noctua fan is just slated for different tasks. It's gonna be better for radiators. It's also gonna be better for tower coolers. The more you know, right? I actually think this is a really cool comparison here because these are two giant manufacturers of fans. Be Quiet and Noctua just make some of the best available units on the market. And these are just very clearly different in terms of their designs. And Noctua makes high airflow fans as well, and you'd expect them to look a bit different than this. Now, before we wrap this one up, consider learning more about Corsair's Xenion Flex OLED gaming monitor, designed to be bendable by the user from flat to a curve of 800R. At 45 inches with its 21 by nine aspect, it's sure to impress, providing immersion when you need it and inclusivity when others also wanna watch. The baked in LG OLED technology is best in class with its 240 Hertz refresh rate, incredible HDR and contrast, and extremely fast a great response time of just 30 microseconds or 0.03 milliseconds. Coupled with NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium Certs, you've got yourself one heck of a gaming monitor. Learn more about the Corsair Xenion Flex 45 WQHD 240 by clicking the link below. So with that, it's time to clean. That's that, that's a mess, so I'll get to that. If I miss something, let me know in the comment section below. I can't possibly cover every fan topic in a single video, but I wanted to make sure that I hit 
all of the major talking points, things that I expect you'll be asking yourself if you're shopping for PC fans, especially as a first time builder. Give this one a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me. And now to that cleaning.